This is a story about two dogs and one song. In 2015, my family adopted two Great Dane dogs, Bella and Blue. The way that this happened was that the owner had fallen into pretty bad health. And we were looking for a dog. And he, in the ad that he had posted, said, my health is declining. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to take care of these two dogs. And they're really bonded. So to do right by them, while I still can, I want to get them adopted together to a loving family. And that turned out to be our family. Uh, the dogs were tremendous. Uh, Bella was about 135 pounds, and Blue was 150 and change. And uh, they also had tremendous personalities. Uh, Bella, chattiest dog I've ever known. She would just walk around the house rrr, 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 muttering to herself all the time. Uh, matter of fact, when I first met Bella, she scared me because when this 135 pound dog came approaching me going the the fight or flight adrenaline was tugging at my sleeve like have we thought this through is this a good idea but it turned out she just had a lot to say in fact uh she was a little bit musical with it as she would walk around the house muttering to herself she would fluctuate tones, so there'd be a little melodic component, you know. And we were endlessly amused at what a good singer Bella was, uh, quite the vocal stylist. Blue, on the other hand, had total stoner surfer dude vibe. His, his face was kind of jowly and just, you know, loose and relaxed. He made me think of the dude from The Big Lebowski, uh, all the time he would look at me as if in his world it was 421 <laughs> and his attitude was always like that's just like your opinion man <laughs> and uh, we fell in love with the dogs the dogs the dogs were great and uh, blue was not chill about food most food motivated dog you can imagine and for a dog his size the gracefulness of his leaping, frolicking, prancing dance whenever there was a treat was a shocker. Uh, and as I think, I think we all do, uh, I started making up songs for the dogs. Uh, blue and Bella, Bella and Blue, there's not too much these dogs can't do. Bella can sing and Blue can dance and he'll steal your cookie if he gets a chance. And this is just the kind of silly thing that we all do. I do it. I, I know you probably do it. We make up little songs for our animals, and uh, we forget them, and then we make up ten more. But this song stuck. Uh, it caught on in my house. Uh, we all started singing it, and uh, it became kind of a hit. In fact... <laughs> One day, a friend of ours came over so that her kid could have a play date with my kid, who was in elementary school at the time, and she wanted to come in and meet the Danes, and I said, sure, come on in, and she came in, and she met them, and she was amazed by them, as everyone was, partly by their sweetness and their playfulness, but partly just by their size. They seem kind of like CGI when you first would meet them, they're just tremendous. And she was playing with the dogs and marveling over how great they are. And I said, hey, you, you wanna hear my song? I wrote a, I wrote a song about, about Bella and Blue. And she said, oh, I already know the song and started singing it to me. And I said, how can you possibly already know this song? We just got these dogs. And she said, well, you sang it and earwormed your kid with it. He came to school and earwormed my kid with it. My kid came home from school singing the song, and now our whole house is like, Blue and Bella, Bella and Blue, not too much these dogs can't do. And I was like, I wrote a hit. <laughs> it's great. It's not the kind of hit I thought I would write, maybe someday, but I'll take it. Uh, Songwriting is something I've 
really revere, and I've studied it all my life. I started writing songs with friends in college, and I, I read interviews with songwriters. I notice the craft of it and how they're put together, and uh, even even worked professionally for a while. I was working for a multimedia curriculum company writing schoolhouse rock type songs for sixth, seventh, eighth graders, uh, and I don't I don't mean to brag. But my song about the foreign policy challenges in the John Adams administration, <laughs> kind of a banger. And, uh, <laughs> and yet I had not had anything like Bella and Blue before. I would, I would host music gatherings at my house and play the song and everybody would sing along. I would go to song circles at, and people would sing along with the song. It always went over great. Singer, songwriter, open mics like at the Cactus Cafe. Oh man, I like that song about the dogs. <laughs> and uh, it, Pete Seeger says, there are two kinds of famous songs. There's the famous songs on the radio and there are the songs that Maybe they're not as profound, but they're on the top 40 countdown in our regular lives. And Bell and Blue turned out to be that kind of song. Uh, songwriting can do amazing things. It can speak to deep, powerful themes. If you're thinking about a hard time in your life and you demand to be treated with R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you know what I'm talking about. When there are times in my life when I've had a hard time accepting things and I learned to just let it be. You know, you know what I'm saying. And maybe there have been times in your life when you were stuck in a pattern that was self-defeating and you said, finally, we're never, ever getting back together. And these are songs that swing for the fence, that try to hit a home run and make reality and truth rhyme, make it melodic make it deep. But the other kind of hit song that Pete Seeger's talking about, there's a word for it and it's quotidian. I really like the word. Quotidian means the quality of ordinariness, the quality of dailiness. If you're talking about the quotidian pleasures of life, it's not sunset at the Grand Canyon. It's how good that first cup of coffee tastes on a Monday morning when you don't want to have to go to work. And it's the Little Pleasures, and Bella and Blue was a song like that. It was also endlessly repeatable and addable to, as we would find new observations about the dogs. I don't know how much you know about Great Danes, but they have kind of a pyramid of bone on top of their skulls. It comes up in this ridge, and it's, it's like a mountain peak that they just carry around up there all the time, and Blue, who already had a huge head, the, the ridge of bone on top of his skull was seriously impressive, and his head was just like really heavy, man, and we observed that when Blue would be standing beside Bella, he might just lean over and flop his head onto her back to rest it a while. He just put his chin right there to get that gravity and weight off of him, and Bella would very sweetly allow it. Thus, Bella turned to me one day and said, Blue's gargantuan boulder head is way too big to fit on the bed. Sometimes he'll rest it on me instead. Oh, Bella and Blue. And on and on the verses went. Uh, as new observations would happen, the song would just be added to and it became part of the musical life of our household. These dogs were five years old when we adopted them and Great Danes don't live that long anyway. So we knew how the story would end. There came a morning that Blue didn't want to eat his breakfast. And so we knew that was trouble. We hurried him to the vet and they found that he was bleeding internally from a splenetic tumor and we had to say a sad and sweet goodbye to our little boy Blue and that was hard on all of us for quite a while and particularly Bella. But Bella had good things in store. If you ask what do Great Danes want to do, the answer is 
whatever you want to do. That's what they want to do. Hike the Appalachian Trail? Heck yeah, let's go. Lay on the couch all day long and don't move and watch every episode of BoJack Horseman? 100% down for that. The dogs just want to do whatever you do. So there could not have been a better treat in store for Bella the Great Dane than the deadly global COVID pandemic that struck the world. Uh, she was in Danish paradise. Work from home, school from home, the people never leave. If they go out at all, it's like for a curbside pickup. It's not to like go really explore the store. And uh, she got a lot of walks and a lot of sweetness. Uh, I would be on work calls um, through my job and, and she would bark when the mail came and, and my colleagues would be like, hey dude, your mail's here. Uh, she, she, got, she even got attention through the computer is what I'm saying. So it was, it was a nice long last run of it for Bella. But of course the, the time came when, when she left us as well and both of our giants had uh, moved on to whatever comes next. But they left us with this sweet, silly song that is meaningful uh, in capturing this chapter of our lives where they took up a lot of real estate in our hearts. And I can bring them back like that anytime. Blue and Bella, Bella and Blue, it's not too much these dogs can't do. Bella can sing and Blue can dance. And he'll steal your cookie if he gets a chance. Oh, Bella and Blue. Thanks.